Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to join the SEC conference. Today, I will talk about the decentralized finance, which is a use case of the blockchain. I am Andrew Lam from EPAM Systems, and uh, currently I'm a mentee of the blockchain mentoring program for business analysts offered by EPAM. And I'm also a member of the blockchain community. Today, we will firstly take an overview uh, of the decentralized finance. And then um, we shall walk through the characteristic of, of it. And then we will know more about the fundamental of decentralized finance and the uh, existing services. We will also take a look on the common protocols and the coins in the defined universe. And then um, we shall take a look on the associated risk in defined, and I will share my closing thoughts at the end. So let's get started. Decentralized finance, defined is indeed a new financial systems. Um, which is uh, based on open source the protocols and distributed applications. It is completely separated from the traditional financial institutions and it aims to allow the easy access from the public. Also, it is addressing the real life needs uh, of the people and it allows the people to store um, to store the personal wealth and to exchange the goods. And also, uh, they can benefit from the lending and the borrowing services, and they can do a lot of uh, trading activities uh, in the decentralized exchange as well. Yeah. In the defined, there is a robust ecosystems and uh, this is not seen in the uh, traditional financial market, and uh, we'll take a look on it later on. Comparing to the Bitcoins and the blockchain applications uh, several years ago, DeFined is far more than just isolated applications or implementations at the middle layers among the institutions. It is not just simply the speculations among the individual investors. This graph shows the total value locked in the DeFi. Uh, it also stands for TVL, and it shows the um, total value circulated in the DeFi protocols, and it is showing the investors conference among the defined projects. It is also uh, reflecting the liquidity and the volume of the transactions in, uh, in different defined protocols. Um, at, the, um, at the end of 2018, um, 200 million US dollars was lotted, but since then, Define is growing exponentially, and uh, right now, this month, 14 billion US dollars uh, is locked in the Define protocols. Um, we have uh, there are other measures of the Define as well, like revenues, the market cap, and the number of users, and uh, we could see similar patterns uh, on these measures as well. So let's take a look on the characteristic of the DeFi. From the service provider's point of view, DeFi is indeed uh, a growing market because um, they are building a lot of um, innovative new services addressing the existing demands or creating the new demands from the public. And uh, because of the flexibility of the backbone of the DeFi, uh, the entry barrier is much lower than um, 
the new players in the traditional financial market. So comparing to the uh, traditional financial market, uh, the setup cost is very high for the new players. And also they are increasingly governed by the regulators. Um, the existing players are facing a keen competition and somehow the market is saturated given the current situation. Uh, from the customers of uh, customers' point of view, major difference are available. Um, the customer realized that um, the DeFi is basically a centralized processing. So the, the uh, decentralization means that every player uh, is a part of the is a part of the pro protocol and they contribute the operations and the processing of the transactions handled by the protocol. Um, people could easily access to the services and basically it is permissionless. And also the defined end users um, are managing the custodian of the cryptocurrency and to settle the a cryptocurrency trading by themselves. And uh, comparing to the traditional financial market, the, uh, all the kinds of the transactions and uh, settlements are handled centrally. And uh, somehow the, uh, the access to the service is screened. So DeFi is offering a more um, convenient uh, way to the profit to uh, to address the financial needs. So let's uh, take a look on the uh, fundamentals or the building blocks for the define. Uh, the major define protocols consist of the smart contracts uh, and it is running on the blockchain and um, on the cryptocurrency as well. And um, most of the uh, protocols are built uh, on Ethereum. And uh, Solidity is the robust programming tool that allows the developers to build applications on top of the Ethereum. And, um, in the DeFi, an, a robust ecosystem exists that allows the, uh, the growth of the DeFi applications. And uh, first of all, uh, we, we have a groups of the developers um, building the protocols and to building the applications to address the needs of the, product, of the people. And then, um, the protocols are launched and um, distributed applications are available uh, to the people. And um, the protocols and the applications are gaining more popular and um, they are handling more transactions. And so uh, a, bigger, um, a bigger group of the end users um, are subscribing the protocols and the applications. And uh, some of them are uh, turned to be the developers, and they are um, and that they are supporting um, the existing or the building the new defined protocols to address more demands from the from the per, uh, from the public. So this kind of an ecosystem um, is a major factor for the growth of the on the other hand investors are putting money uh, on the on the protocols uh, aiming to uh, get the bigger market share uh, and to make more money uh, on the defined protocols and uh, invest uh, this kind of angel capital uh, is indeed a, a major factor to boost the DeFi universe. On the other hand, 
um, uh, money Lego uh, allows the different defined applications to um, uh, to run in an organized way to address uh, different kinds of the needs. And uh, we'll take a look on it later. So uh, in the defined universe, um, there are many basic services available for the end users. Uh, first of all, we have some wallets to uh, to store the cryptocurrencies so that uh, they can deposit the different kinds of the uh, currency at uh, cryptocurrencies to the wallet and um, the end users have full control um, on the coins and uh, they can configure their uh, security level. Uh, besides the wallets, there are trading and the transactions to um, make use of the cryptocurrencies. And uh, by using this kind of a payment apps, the transactions are secured. And, and because of the easy access, it is a welcome by the underbanked um, uh, profit. Marketplace are available, so that's the people who could make use of the cryptocurrencies or the coins to uh, to trade some digital goods like um, the weapons or the points of the digital games and also digital arts are also traded on marketplace by making use of the defined protocols. On the other hand, lending and the borrowing are popular in the defined universe. So people could um, collateral uh, could make use of uh, a kind of the cryptocurrency as a collateral and to lend the money to other persons in need. And that they could gain the interest by getting the regular um, repayment. Uh, insurance business is growing in the defined as well because um, the D, uh, insurance contracts uh, could be packaged as a smart contracts and uh, uh, such insurance contracts are protecting against the fluctuations fluctuations of the values or the operations of the other smart contracts and the wallets on the other hand uh, real life events are protected as well like the flight delays and that the uh, people could get compensated in the cryptocurrencies if uh, such events happen. And then uh, we could, uh, there are more sophisticated uh, financial service built uh, on top of the basic service. So right uh, at this moment, um, there are decentralized exchange uh, which are trading the cryptocurrencies or the derivatives as well. So DYDX and the unit swaps are um, a famous decentralized uh, exchange that allows the people to um, make contracts on cryptocurrencies and to trade the derivatives and other products packaged using the cryptocurrencies. Uh, margin trading uh, is more popular now because of the uh, because of the popular lending and the borrowing. So um, the end users could uh, borrow um, with a small sum of the cryptocurrency, so to um, uh, make some gain on the market events or the fluctuations of a certain coins. So basically, uh, this kind of uh, tradings are um, common in the traditional financial markets, and um, they are also available in the DeFi universe as well. Uh, on the other hand, recently we uh, we could uh, subscribe some 
huge defined platforms. And uh, this kind of platforms bundle different kinds of the defined surface together in a single platform. Say, for example, for Yang Finance, people could deposit the currencies uh, into the wallet and then they could um, lend some money uh, to other persons in the same platform and uh, they could uh, make some new insurance contracts um, to protect uh, the cryptocurrencies. On the other hand, they could uh, uh, they could make some swap contracts to to get another kind of the cryptocurrency, or they or they could trade parts of the uh, coins uh, on the same platform. So um, it is a mimic to the uh, huge financial institutions um, in the traditional financial market. Okay. So I think uh, this is a this is a trend to uh, bundle different kinds of uh, defined applications. And uh, this is a good example of the money Lego because money Lego is indeed a, a set of the technical stacks that allow different protocols to be bundled or to organize and to run in, um, in a way that address the end-to-end -end needs of the, pro, um, of the end users. And uh this is um this is because we uh the feasibility and um the feasibility of the uh, ethereum protocols and people could um bundle um different application servers and to build such kind of uh, huge platform in a very short amount of time In the defined world, um, we have a different kinds of the coins and um, stable coins are very famous. Uh, we have some uh, popular coins or the cryptocurrencies like USDT and USDC, uh, which are bundled um, to the US dollar. And also uh, DAI is another famous stable coin um, which is um, which is uh, which have the um, other cryptocurrencies as the collateral and uh, there are some innovative coins available recently and non-fungible token nft is one of them uh, stable value is achieved in nft because it addressed the inelastic supply issue of the crypto of many cryptocurrencies and also it managed to decouple uh, from the value of the um, of the bitcoin on the other hand uh, in many major defined protocols um, Governance coins are issued to the contributors um, or the supporters. Uh, and this kind of the coins are also uh, distributed to, um, to the users, which provide the liquidity to the protocol. And uh, people could make use of uh, these coins for other kinds of the trading. So, um, this is a kind of the incentive that uh, that helps uh, that attract the supporters and allows the growth of the DeFi. Um, Uniswap is a very famous uh, protocol and uh, is indeed uh, turned to a uh, decentralized exchange. Uh, on the other hand, we have new kinds of the protocols. Yound is uh, one of them. Uh, it allows the uh, the users to to get the maximum rate of return among different defined protocols. And uh, it is uh, getting more popular now. And uh, Ampleforth is an, another innovative uh, protocol. 
which allows the tokenization of the assets and it makes use of the NFT uh, to um, to stabilize the value of the tokenized assets. Um, it is worth to see that continuous improvements exist for the DeFi protocols. Layer 2 is a major improvement of the Ethereum and it makes use of a lot of new techniques like building the side trains, establishing the channels or the plasma. And uh, as a result, uh, the protocol is able to handle much more transactions comparing to uh, comparing to the uh, capability years ago. Uh, somehow it uh, address it well address the scalability trinema. Uh, because um, conventionally, to achieve uh, greater scalability, uh, we might have to sacrifice the security and the decentralization cap uh, capabilities of the defined protocol. However, layer two uh, successfully uh, boost the scalability, but it maintained the characteristic of the security and the decentralization. All these kind of improvements aim to catch up to the transaction power of the existing financial global systems. Um, on the other hand, um, why DeFi is growing is that uh, the mechanisms or the scenarios of the defined protocols are well published and thus well known to the to the end users. Um, say, for example, for the yield farming, um, by uh, by understanding the protocol, the end users could uh, could uh, trade the cryptocurrencies in a different protocol. In in the protocol to get the mess uh, to increase the rate of the return. So, and um, also, uh, impermanent loss means that uh, by providing uh, extra liquidity to the protocol, somehow the value of the critical currency on hold by the end users uh, could be reduced a bit. But in the long run, it could gain. Um, by providing the liquidity. So that's why um, the end users are incentive to uh, to provide the liquidity to support the protocol. And the uh, ample forth is uh, ample forth is um, another kind of the new protocol that um, people understand how it works and uh, and that the people are confident to um, uh, to tokenize the assets under this protocol. Um, because of this kind of uh, understanding, uh, uh, such kind of uh, transparency is a welcome by the end users. And um, basically, uh, we see the similar principles in the conventional financial markets because people are encouraged to learn the financial products before they make the investment. And uh, people are also encouraged to keep an eye on the investor capital. So this kind of uh, principles also apply to DeFi as well. Uh, we should not ignore the risk associated with the DeFi. So, um, uh, the end users should keep an eye on the fluctuation of the price because somehow the unexpected fluctuations uh, resulting from uh, certain actions from the major players um, could um, could depreciate the coins. And also um, the inefficient data fit uh, of the other currencies uh, may uh, bring the bias to 
the transaction decisions um, of the protocol end users. And uh, this is a kind of the Oracle risk in the DeFi. On the other hand, um, because of the increasing volume of the transaction, uh, people may face the network contraction, uh, congestion so that their trace could not be processed at, um, at the expected time. And uh, the delay of the trade may, um, uh, may discourage the new users to, um, to join the protocol. And also um, the applications or protocols may not be uh, fully well developed. So um, it may be open to uh, some hacking or uh, hacking activities. And uh, as a result, um, the uh, the protocol operations could be um, could be affected, and uh, in the worst case, uh, some coins could be uh, um, uh, would be would be lost. And also, the liquidity of the protocol uh, may uh, may fail as well due to some uh, unexpected events and. Uh, a vampire attack is a very special um, uh, incident happened um, in the defined universe. So, um, and uh, that is uh, relating to the um, uh, to a governance weakness um, of the Uniswap. Uh, because of the growth of the DeFi, it is attracting many uh, investors and the public. So um, uh, regulators are uh, keeping an eye on it. And also uh, KYC and the AML um, uh, are, also, um, are also concerned by the regulators. And several months ago, uh, BitMax uh, was charged by the CFTC and the Department of Justice because um, somehow some money laundering activities were detected um, in the bit mess. And um, on the other hand, uh, people should be aware of the uh, on the fake schemes um, which are relating to the new projects packaged as uh, new defined protocols. But uh, Basically, uh, defined uh, is no doubt in growing, and it is really addressing the uh, the real needs um, of the uh, of the of the people. And um, personally, it is interesting to learn uh, the mechanisms um, and the operations of the protocol, and uh, the ecosystem of the defined is really robust and. It is a really a very special characteristic not found in um, in in other areas. Uh, Define is a very successful use case of the uh, of the blockchain and the dis um, distributed ledger as well. And um, as a developer, uh, I think it is good to involve in Define by uh, to be a, one of the end users or to be a developer on the protocols. Okay. And uh, I eager to see its long term impact um, on the conventional um, financial market. And, uh, and it is, uh, and I eager to see um, um, the innovative uh, service offered. Um, by the new defined protocols. So um, uh, this is the end of this uh, of the introduction of the defined, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, thanks for your time to join this presentation. Thank you and goodbye.